Hi, have you ever wondered why sugar dissolves readily in water while oil doesn't? Or why water boils at such a high temperature? Well, in this short screencast, we're going to tell you some rules of thumb that you can use to guess the physical characteristics of different substances. What you may learn from this video is to rank similar chemical substances, or at least make a good guess at it, according to their boiling point, or melting point, their volatility, their water solubility, their fat solubility, or to be more precise, their solubility in organic solvents, and their excretion rate from our body. And furthermore, to explain what information is missing for ranking them according to their tendency to bioaccumulate and biomagnify. What it all boils down to is the intermolecular forces between molecules. And this depends on things like the molecular size, so if it's a short chain or a long chain, and their polarity. So if it's like this one, hexane, or this one with two alcohol groups, and the alcohol groups are polar. And in reality, there are a lot of other things to take into account, things like shape and intramolecular forces, so forces between different parts of the same molecule. So volatility, what's that? Well, if you have liquid water at a certain temperature, and it's, if it's in equilibrium with the surrounding gas, then a certain fraction of the gas molecules is water. If you increase the temperature, this fraction increases in the gas above. And when it's near boiling point, nearly all the molecules are water molecules. So this is the vapor pressure. And the vapor pressure increases with temperature. And at room temperature, we have a certain volatility of a substance. The boiling point is defined as the point where which the vapor pressure of the substance is one atmosphere. So that's the boiling point. Rules of thumb for volatility. For a molecule to evaporate from a liquid, it has to break free. So the stronger the intermolecular forces, the lower the volatility. So a more polar molecule has stronger forces between different molecules and thus a lower volatility. A longer or larger molecule also gets stronger forces between the molecules and thus a lower volatility. And the boiling point rank is essentially the opposite of the volatility rank. So the more volatile the substance is, the lower the boiling point. For solubility, the rule of thumb is like dissolves like. So if you have two molecules here, A and B, and the forces between A and A is different from the forces between B and B, A tends to gather on one side and B on the other, so they don't dissolve in each other. Water is a polar molecule, while fat is a non-polar molecule. So water dissolves polar substances, or salts also, and water does not dissolve fat. So rules for thumb for water solubility is that since water is a polar molecule and like salts like, so the larger the fraction of the molecule that is polar, the more water soluble the molecule is. And the smaller the molecule is, the more water soluble. And fat solubility is the opposite of water solubility. So the more water soluble a substance is, the less fat soluble it is. Rules of thumb for excretion rate is that, well, we can easily get rid of water-soluble substances. We just pee them out, and we pee a lot. So the excretion rate ranking is the same as the water solubility ranking. If it's easily soluble in water, we can easily get rid of it. What about biomagnification and bioaccumulation? Well, biomagnification is when the concentration of a substance increases with the trophic levels. So higher in the hedgehog than the flower and higher in the fox than in the hedgehog. By accumulation is when the concentration within a, a species is larger than the concentration in the surrounding environment or in the food. Now, if you see this here, uh, you see that the hedgehog in the biomagnification example, has a higher concentration than the flower, so there is bioaccumulation there, right? 
So bi bioaccumulation is a prerequisite for biomagnification. While we're at definitions, uh, let's just define by activation as, as well. If you inhale or ingest hexane, for example, when the body tries to take care of it, it happens to turn it into a substance that is dangerous for us. And that kind of process is bioactivation. Hexane is bioactivated to something more dangerous. Rules of thumb for biomagnification is that if it can't bioaccumulate, it can't biomagnify. And uh, to bioaccumulate, it needs to stay in the organism, and we can't excrete fatty substances. So the body or the, or the organism tries to either excrete the substance directly, exam for example, through urine, or make the substance more water soluble so that we can excrete it. And what happens with hexane is that when our body tries to make it more water soluble, it turns into a more dangerous substance. And the third thing is that we can use them, use the energy to so break down the substance to carbon dioxide and water. Now the problem is that we have no rules of thumb for how easy it is to break down a substance or to make it more water soluble. Okay, let's take two examples. The solution in, is in a separate screencast. So here we have hexane 2 hexanol and 2 5 hexane diol. And you should rank these according to their volatility, their boiling point, their water solubility, their fat solubility, and their excretion rate. And then you should say something about their tendency to bioaccumulate and biomagnify. Our second example here we have 1 hexanol one heptanol and one octanol, and you should rank them in the same way as you did in example one.